Vladimir in Odessa, Ukraine writes to me, what's your opinion on digital amplifiers like those from Lingdorf? Can they sound right or will A, A, B always win? Um, yeah, they can sound right. Our Stellar series, the 1200, the 700, the 300, those are great sounding digital amplifiers, digital in that they are class D. They are pulse width modulated, meaning they're not digital in that there's a digital signal. They, they put out a pulse and that pulse gets wider or smaller 100,000 times a second. And the combination of if, you know, a whole bunch of wide ones makes it loud and a whole bunch of narrow ones makes it soft. And that's basically how PWM works. It's closer to how DSD, which is pulse density modulation, running at a much higher rate works than PCM. There are PCM amplifiers out there and maybe Lingdorf, I don't know what Peter is up to these days, but maybe he's making it. What we're up to, I mean, here's a sneak peek. Check that bad boy out if you can see it. That is a new PMG amplifier that's sitting on Bob Stather's test bench. And we just looked at the square wave from that. Now, I will explain that in a minute, but I got to tell you, I have never in 50 years seen a square wave as beautifully reproduced as this PMG amplifier. And all the PMG amplifiers coming out are all class high, high bias class A and then switching over to AB. But their, their first 10, 10 watts or so, 20 watts, something like that, are all class A. I mean, this is a whole new breed uh, it's got an all-new power supply. It, it, they're killer sounding. and But the square wave. So here, okay, I'm off on a tangent. Let me explain to you. One of the things, we don't listen to square waves. So why would it matter? Think about a square wave. It's going from zero, all of a sudden straight up, transient, as quickly as it can go, goes over like that, holds that, and comes back down. Now, in 50 years of designing and working on amplifiers, every single square wave I have ever seen go through an amplifier is either shoots up and has a bit of ring at the, you know, it's called overshoot. So it goes up ah, and it comes back down. And so there's always a bobble at the top of where it stops and goes over and then comes down. And that is always something that will cause a little bit of harshness, a little bit of brightness in the signal, that, that overshoot, which is what you don't want, right? So what you want is this perfect sine square wave that goes up and then like a tube. Many times tube amplifiers do the opposite and it's kind of rounded, which is nice. It's a roundy sound, but it's not perfect. This amplifier designed by uh, Darren Myers and Bob Stather, who did all the hard work on it, is perfect, not just great, it is perfect. And I have, I've never seen anything like that. Okay, all right, so yes, um, digital amps, class D amps, absolutely can sound great. One last thing I'll say about them is they are very dependent on their input state. So you, sh the way you design a class D amplifier for high-end audio purposes is the way that we do it and, and, and others, of course. And that is you shape the sound with an analog input gain stage in the first and then use the class D output to deliver the power and proper power supply and proper input analog stage. Like on the 1200, we use vacuum tubes to round and shape that. On the 700s, we use this beautiful discrete stage that just forms it and, and we do it by ear. And, and it looks great. And no, the square wave doesn't look that great. <laughs> but I, what are you going to do? All right. I've babbled enough. <laughs> I hope that helps. Take it easy. Bye.